as many of you may recognize, this is a little different from my usual external relations talk. And I thought since there's been a lot of developments going on with the subcommittee on geodesy and, and other things that I would focus on that. And if you want to talk about any kind of uh, outreach, if you have any kind of, I would say in general, uh, if you have any things that you would like to utilize our connections with like the group on Earth observations or the committee on Earth observation satellites or other bodies, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm very happy to provide connections and, and try to make sure that our, our work benefits from all of our, our general external participation. Uh, but today, uh, I'd like to focus on the new uh, UNGGIM Subcommittee on Geodesy's strategic plan and uh, touch a little bit about how the subcommittee is going to uh, continue its work uh, in light of the fact that we now have a new Global Geodetic Center of Excellence that's just been realized. Um, all right, so to many of us, this may not be anything new, but uh, you know, we, we look at the why behind the where. And uh, as, as was stated in, by one of our colleagues at the UN, um, partnership is not an option, it is a necessity. And since no one country can maintain the global geodetic reference frame alone. So cognizant of this need, the Subcommittee on Geodesy, together with its international partners and stakeholders, uh, is working together to collectively leverage limited assets to the top of current geodetic capacity and knowledge with the hope to enable communities around the world with findable, accessible, and interoperable positioning data and the multitude of benefits that that comes with. So as I noted, um, we have a new Global Geodetic Center of Excellence in Bonn. And because of this new addition to our geodesy family, the subcommittee on geodesy met last March in Bonn uh, to kind of reflect and discuss how we can move forward uh, together with the center of excellence in a coherent and coordinated manner. Uh, so in many ways, the GGCE, as we're calling it, the acronym, the Global Geodetic Center of Excellence, uh, will be an operational hub for coordination on a global basis. Uh, however, the hub is just part one part of a wheel, which requires spokes and even sometimes tires or treads to be able to move forward. In this regard, the subcommittee uh, will draw on its members, who in turn are representatives appointed by each of the uh, global geodetic information, excuse me, UN Global Geospatial Information Management, GGIM regional committees, and bring the benefits of broad international collaboration to reality on a local scale. Uh, while the plan of the subcommittee moving forward may be a global plan, the GGRF must be implemented at a local level. And we're hoping to strongly interact with uh, or be guided by the integrated geospatial information frameworks, uh, guiding framework. And so the subcommittee has designed a strategic plan moving forward to continue its work and service to science and society and in, in alignment with other UN policies and frameworks. So uh, overall, um, the, what I will touch on is basically the strategic actions, the steps we're taking towards sustaining the GGRF, uh, the collaborative priority areas established by the subcommittee. Uh, one of the uh, next actions this, that the subcommittee will undertake together with the Center of Excellence and uh, just looking at partnerships and synergies and maybe more opportunities for our organizations collectively moving forward. So the subcommittee has defined seven tasks that will support the continued development and impl implementation of the global geodetic reference frame. Uh, a global plan is to be developed for the GGCE to implement as an operational center. The required outreach and education to leadership from member states as well as global organizations will be considered. And all of this uh, is to be provided to and coordinated with the Center of Excellence. And the idea is that this will take place via four collaborative priority areas. Now these seven strategic actions that you see here on the screen are not independent of each other. 
and there are notable synergies and opportunities for building on accomplishments and maximizing use and impact of existing resources. Uh, furthermore, a global geodesy needs assessment will hopefully provide the basis for a global plan for the Center of Excellence to implement. And a state of geodesy report will help to get these needs implemented in a formalized manner, while uh, the other strategic actions you see here will communicate and facilitate the plan's development. So each of these really interacts with the others and requires communication among the subcommittee, subcommittee, sub, the subcommittee's working groups, the center of excellence partners, as well as a diverse and growing community of stakeholders. So to move the work forward, the subcommittee has formed three working groups. Uh, you may remember that there were at 1.5. Uh, some of these have completed their work and uh, well, one, one has stayed on because it's, its work will never end. <laughs> so moving on to the strategic actions. The first strategic action centers on conducting a comprehensive global geodesy needs assessment, uh, which is to be done in close collaboration with our partners at the, here at the um, International Association of Geodesy, as well as our colleagues at the International Federation of Surveyors. Uh, the assessment will examine where geodetic infrastructure needs need to be established or improved uh, with a perspective at the global level. Uh, within this assessment, the, the needs of specific infrastructural components of the reference frame, such as VLBI, SLR, and GNSS, will be addressed, since the distribution of diverse geodetic infrastructure must meet necessary locations, spacing, and quality. Uh, however, the subcommittee has recognized that implementation of this infrastructure is not solely uh, decided by geometry and mathematical optimization, uh, and that we need member states to support and host this infrastructure. Uh, connecting global to local, the input from the GGIM regional committees will be essential, and by extension, I think also our uh, GIGOS affiliate groups are, are really starting to take a form of uh, a complementary form to the GGIM regional committees. And with the hope that this will Id identify compelling reasons to invest in and host geodetic infrastructure, as well as to empower our colleagues in member states to be able to access and benefit from the resources of geodesy. Uh, it's, it, it is hoped that this, as this assessment will also help to communicate with and educate decision makers as a part of an IGIF country level action plan that meets their local needs as well as those of the global geodesy community. And while infrastructure is an important part of this work, it is worthless without the capacity development and education of people to operate, use it, and really make the most of it. And so the subcommittee strives to identify needs that once addressed will result in direct and tangible benefit to the people in each member state and ultimately help uh, realize the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And to do this, the subcommittee has established a working group to conduct this global geodesy needs assessment uh, for sustaining and extending the global geodetic reference frame. Uh, it will build upon the work and analysis of previous surveys, uh, some of which you may have been involved in, and uh, serve as a guide for an integrated response. Uh, the subcommittee hopes to leverage the experience and resources from around the global geodesy community, as well as the GGIM regional committees and other components for a coherent and coordinated plan forward. So building on the uh, momentum and information of the global geodesy needs assessment, the subcommittee will again collaborate with its partners, which includes GIGOS, uh, to support drafting a state of geodesy report, which will serve as a comprehensive resource for policy and decision making. The report will help to identify, contextualize, and communicate the tangible and intangible benefits of sustaining the GGRF. Uh, it will also provide perspective of not only member states, but also the benefits to academia and the private sector. Consequently, as implementation of the GGIF 
GG, sorry, GGRF, uh, percolates to the broader society, so does uh, Geodesy's contributions to achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals and other policies and priorities. Developing fact sheets and case studies will help further communicate and educate the current and potential benefits of geodesy to a wide array of applications and issues. This will, in turn, provide an example of how implementing and investing in the GGRF can translate to societal benefits, such as how member states can include geodesy as part of their IGIF, or Integrated Geospatial Information Framework, country-level action plan. So further build, building on the work of this Global Geodesy Needs Assessment and the State of Geodesy Report, the subcommittee plans to work with the Center of Excellence towards a Global Geodesy Development Plan, guiding investment in our future with strong collective understanding of the challenges. This plan will offer a collaborative and effective geodesy-enabled solutions to the needs and issues identified through the preceding efforts. Uh, the plan will include recommendations for achievement of common goals and interests, including accessibility and standardization. If our maps are the core means of geospatial communication, then the, the global geodetic reference frame must be the translator. In this, the subcommittee will aid in defining and underpinning technical and infrastructural elements, and the GGCE will use this as a tool in its role as the operational hub for implementing the GGRF. As such, the, the subcommittee has established a working group to address the collaborative priority area of drafting, drafting a state of geodesy report. With frameworks for describing geodesy's complex and diverse contributions to society through a series of indicators, state case studies, and fact sheets, uh, this report will include information for policymakers about how the GGRF plays a critical role in delivering impactful solutions toward achieving the sustainable development goals and informing policy-based decision-making for everyone's benefit. Finally, the group will also assist, assist in drafting the foundation for a global ge geodesy development plan to realize a sustainable GGRF. So in addition to these reports, the subcommittee will continue to serve, facilitate, and coordinate a number of ongoing efforts in support of the GGRF. The strategic action to support and promote global coordination, coherence, and partnerships will include a coordination with the GGCE to avoid duplication of effort and leverage collective resources. Uh, complex stakeholder engagement and outreach, including events like this, and uh, as well as GGIM meetings, and global, global partner collaboration to ensure coordinated events throughout the subcommittee member states, GGIM regional committees, and aligned with partner activities, just like what we're at today. So in support of developing the State of Geodesy report, awareness and advocacy to member states, regional committees, and stakeholders is essential. In this action, the subcommittee will continue to identify and communicate the current and continued benefit of participating in the GGRF through in-person and virtual events as appropriate. In addition to the reports originating from efforts of the subcommittee and the GGCE, there will be targeted advocacy toward awareness of the contributions of geodesy in other UN policy documents and reports such as the World Meteorological Organization's State of the Climate and the United Nations Environment Program Global Environment Outlook. In this work, the subcommittee will collaborate with the Center of Excellence to advocate the benefits of the GGRF and support for and, and its support for all geospatial information, standardization, access, and sustainability. So as was noted earlier, the uh, geodesy needs assessment not only documents the requirements of geodetic infrastructure, but also the knowledge, skills, and abilities that will need to be required to implement the GGRF. 
capacity and capability development questions such as how many people, what skills, how many in government, how many in the private sector, what level of training, what standards are needed, what laws are applicable. All of this must be assessed as part of a geodesy enabled IGIF country level action plan. So we're bringing this down to the country level at this point. And through, through the efforts of this action, the subcommittee works to ensure that appropriate capacity and capability development can be achieved. Once goals and needs are identified, this can help ensure that it is implemented sustainably and in alignment with member state plans, policies, and priorities. Finally, the existing and ongoing capacity and capability initiatives of partner members, such as here in GIGOS and in broader IAG, and the International Federation of Surveyors, but will be included to build on these expert community resources and ensure that no one is left behind. Finally, a sustained awareness is, re is required. Branding and communications will focus on keeping this in the forefront in the, of the minds of decision makers. Uh, too often, something that declines in visibility is neglected and its usability is compromised. And this has been the case, as we've seen, uh, for ge geodetic infrastructure on a global, regional, and even on a national basis. Uh, continuous visibility through strategic communications will continue to influence those decision makers on the continued significant return on investment that the GGRF brings. So these last uh, four strategic actions uh, will be supporting global coordination, coherence, and partnerships for a sustainable global geodetic reference frame. They will raise awareness and advocate for global geodesy capacity and education and develop relevant communications to focus uh, the work of the, of the continued working group on capacity and education. Uh, though, as was noted before, all three of these working groups will touch on the all seven of the strategic actions. And these will require close coordination with the Global Geodetic Center of Excellence, uh, its International Advisory uh, Council, and uh, the UNGGIM Committee to deconflict and better coordinate. So the next, the immediate next step uh, will be to build this global geodesy needs assessment. Uh, its first work will be to understand the benefits of GGRF, not only globally, but also down to the level of a member state or country. And this will emphasize the need for all member states to be involved. As the next steps toward the global geodesy needs assessment are underway, the subcommittee is considering stakeholder identification, stakeholder needs and gaps, and looking to policy solutions based on established practices. Such topics under initial consideration include, how are these stakeholders affected by a sustainable GGRF? Uh, how, could a, how could a stakeholder affect adoption of geodetic infrastructure, skills, or capacity in their region? What aspects of the GGRF does each stakeholder care most about? How are stakeholders in the GGRF interrelated? How do they connect and share geodetic infrastructure and capacity? And where do these needs and gaps take place? Who is impacted by these needs and gaps and how? Uh, what are some causes or shortcomings that contribute to these needs and gaps? What policy solutions are already in place to address these needs and gaps? And how can the subcommittee fully leverage existing resources? And what can we learn from policy development best practices to not just advocate the importance of, but also inform and guide investment in geodesy. And so looking back at all of this information through the lens of the IGIF, the UN's Integrated Geospatial Information Framework, we see that all seven strategic actions of the Subcommittee on Geodesy are aligned with aspects of the IGIF and its strategic pathways. Uh, the subcommittee will also be looking to develop an IGIF sublayer for geodesy, much as uh, a, a, a similar group, the Marine Geospatial Information Working Group of the GGIM, uh, developed a sublayer for the maritime domain called the IGIF Hydro. 
It's worth noting that whether or not funding from the World Bank is sought, a geodesy-informed country-level action plan could be essential to ensuring that the GGRF is implemented with economic efficiency and that societal benefits are maximized. And finally, as, as we look to the IGF, IGIF, we see that it provides a common vocabulary and framework for communicating the benefits of the GGRF and geodesy. And it can serve as a collaborative roadmap to help governments develop access and use geodetic information to make effective policies and to more accurately direct aid and development resources. This has great potential to serve as a guideline for accessible and standardized GGRF for sustainable development. So finally, as, as we note in the beginning, uh, no one member state or organization can do this alone. And the subcommittee has invited partners to join its work. And these are just a, a few of the initial partners, uh, but they are welcome to additional participation. So if, you, if your organization is interested in becoming a partner of the subcommittee, I would strongly encourage you to contact the co-chairs. I'm sure that they would uh, be very happy to talk more about, the, about this with you. So, thank you. Thank you, Alison. Are there questions or comments to this presentation? Thank you for a very nice talk, and I think I have a comment for you and the previous speaker. Um, I made so many notes, I just need to find myself here. But okay, uh, you talked a, a lot about enhancing knowledge, innovation, development through coordination and stakeholder identification. So my comment is just that um, I don't often see the astro astronomical community as being a stakeholder, and I think it is a stakeholder. Um, very often in geodesy, we share resources with the astronomical community. We went to the Yebes Observatory yesterday. Um, it does astronomy, it does geodesy, all the um, infrastructure for, for geodesy is there co-located with, you know, all the astronomical instruments as well. And the same, so, yeah, we share infrastructure resources. Funding streams are often, in many cases, the fam same funding stream. Um, in South Africa, for example, um, if we look also at next generation instruments like the SKA, I think we need to be more visible so that funding streams don't only go to all these new generation instruments for astronomy and people forget about the geodesy component at these observatories. Also, maybe closer cooperation with the IAU. There's the IAU General um, Assembly next year, which happens to be in South Africa, that might also be a very good opportunity to interact with Africa. Yeah. Um, in a, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's a great point. And one of the things that we try to do by, by looking up at UN policies and other uh, external groups are to communicate that uh, sometimes there are opportunities to, to really maximize an investment or to show that, that geodesy is, is something that is not only benefiting uh, a, a one particular government agency, like be, it, be it cadastral or space agency, but also it could be impacting uh, astronomy, it could be impacting a disaster risk reduction. There are a lot of other things that, um, you know, we almost become kind of victims of our own success, that geodesy is so ubiquitous, it's everywhere. And people tend to forget about it because it's not immediately visible. So yeah, definitely ha finding new ways of, of showing uh, stakeholders, whether they realize it or not, that uh, collaboration with, with geodesy is important and, and can really help to maximize investments. So great point. The title of your presentation was GIGOS External Relations. So what is the role of GIGOS? I didn't see once mentioning GIGOS, not even once. Well, <laughs> in this case, uh, GIGOS participates via the IAG. And, and so there is participation of the IAG in the subcommittee on geodesy. And so it really it can serve as a, an opportunity for us to be a, a tool, to be a collaboration uh, facilitator 
to be a, a technical consultant to the subcommittee and to the Center of Excellence. Uh, but I thought that since uh, neither our, of our um, sub subcommittee or uh, Center of Excellence colleagues could join us today, that this is something that is so uh, important to our work uh, that we, I'd focus on on the subcommittee's uh, report. And, and we can maybe discuss how GIGOS could continue participating in the subcommittee's work now that we've seen uh, its new working groups and its uh, seven strategic actions, because I definitely think that there's, there's opportunities for us. So I might just add to that, that the IAG is leading the working group on the global needs assessment. I have, um, this is Harald Schuh speaking. I have a um, comment and a question to your slide number nine, where you mentioned the fact sheets that are getting produced on, uh, on the left hand side. Very important topics, for instance, economic value and contribution to GDP. Uh, it will be very good to get such fact sheets. I just want to say, and uh, uh, that's a question, each fact sheet needs um, a very detailed study and uh, let's say a report uh, on which it will be based. So who is uh, uh, carrying out these studies? For instance, about the economic value. If you want to do it uh, carefully, it really needs <laughs> some efforts. Yeah, absolutely. And this is really what we're hoping the Center of Excellence can help us with. Mm -hmm. That there, there, it will serve as a co centralized coordination hub. It will be able to uh, look at other uh, similar fact sheets and other documents that are prepared by other UN agencies and uh, hopefully also be able to, to call upon uh, colleagues here at, in, within GIGOS and the IAG and other organizations uh, to provide expert advice. But I do agree, it's a, it's a substantial undertaking. And so we're, we're very glad to have full-time help with the Center of Excellence now to help uh, bring this to a reality. I have a ridiculous question, but I have to make the question. If you go to the first slide, Here, here, no, the, the previous one, the very, very first, the title. Here, we have you here as main uh, contribu contributor, and you are the GIGOS external uh, relations manager. And we have also Suheir Al Tamimi, and I think. Uh, Okay, he is the, the immediately past president of IEG. Would it be possible to put here the logo of IEG uh, to, to make IEG more visible? At uh, the end, you two um, are in somehow working together with the IEG, so I, I don't <laughs> understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I saved the logo actually for end yeah because because here you are saying we 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 welcome a representatives from from these organizations and we have two representatives now right now you and Suheir but the the logo of IG is not there and and then one thing thinks yeah how can I contribute if my organization is not visible at the end, or at the very end. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And actually, the, uh, so this is kind of a, um, a condensed version of the, uh, the presentation that I gave to the Global Geodesy Forum at the United Nations prior to the, the GGIM Committee of Experts session in August. And we got the, we got a very similar question. They said, "Well, how come how yeah, come my logo is not up there?" And uh, and the answer from the the subcommittee chair was was that. Uh, this is really just what was decided at the first meeting of the uh, the GGCE and during the subcommittee on geodesy meeting in in March, and that it's certainly op it, it's it's not a closed list. And so uh, people who want to become a fit, these, these are official partner uh, organizations of the of the subcommittee as it was as it, as it decided in in March. So. 
uh, yeah, we can definitely find ways. If, if you, like you said, I think putting the, the IEG logo is, is a good idea in the, in the front. Uh, since this was more of a GGIM focused uh, presentation, that's kind of how I, I structured yeah, it. Yeah, it, it but, would be nice yeah. that the GGIM knows that the IEG exists. Right. And this will be the, the ideal forum for that. And, and for us from GIGOS, our, our face outside are you. And if you, if you don't uh, use the, the IEG logo, there is something missing. But OK, yeah. I, I said it was a ridiculous question. <laughs> Thank you again for your presentation.